chapter three, and actually I made a mistake before. I kept thinking that I don't know. I every time I said like uh, here ends chapter two, I was thinking like oh that's the end of the Martin's Place Cthulhu run. We are still on part one. Part one. So here we are, chapter three, still a part one. Treacherous salvage. The characters escape their endangered world with the help of Captain Sartell and her ship, the Moon Danza, and ran afoul of an astral elf ship called the Starmon. After surviving the first wild space encounter, the characters resumed their voyage to the Rock of Brawl. Along the way, they made a terrifying discovery, a mind flayer ship lurking among sunken streams. When it first appeared to be a dangerous mind flayer ship, it turns out to be a derelict vessel. A closer investigation turns up a single member of the pirate crew. In fact, this survivor is a Sirlon Ringer. Sirlon. I think they showed in here. Guru's Astral Lingerie. I think this is where we will find them. for a sirloin. Sirloin. That's what this ugly mother looks like. But right now it looks like a human. And we've got a Sirloin Ringer. Yep, a Sirloin Ringer. Lucent Edict. The vessel is the Lucent Edict, the Nautilus. After the characters sight the craft, read. As the Nautilus ship shaped vessel drifts closer, Captain Sartell lets out a sigh of relief. Oh, it's a derelict, she says, pointing out what's stripped of weaponry and broken hull. There were mind flayers aboard, and they would have attacked us by now. Looks like somebody's already picked it over. Still, there might be something left worth salvaging. The 
The sensory input provided by the Moon Dancer's spell jamming film interfaces in a special way with Flapjack's advanced telepathy, enabling the film to sense the presence of a, of a telepathic activity on nearby vessels and making the flump a sort of early warning system in advance of encounters with mind flayers and their ilk. The Metal Lord makes Flapjack uneasy, feeling that stems from the presence, a feeling that stems from the presence of Sirlons on board. At the same time, the Sirlons alien mind trait confounds the flump's advanced telepathy. Flapjack has a vague sense that something is aboard the derelict vessel, but can't say what. He shares this information with Sartell and any characters with whom he has forged a close bond. Speaking of Edgar, it's my cast now. Captain Sartell orders Flapjack to bring her ship alongside the vessel while she dis uh, designates the characters as a boarding party, instructing them to kill any hostile creature they encounter. If the characters balk at exploring the Nautiloid, Captain Sartell sarcastically apologizing, apologizes for interrupting their pleasure cruise. He wonders aloud whether they'd rather stay back and swab the decks while she does all the hard work. If the characters st still refuse, Captain Sartell makes good on her threat and boards the vessel herself in search of salvage. When she doesn't return, Flapjack urges the party to go and find her, refusing to leave the Nautiloid behind until they do so. Benoto Quelazar. Quelazar. Benoto. Whether or not the characters consent to Captain Sartell's plan, they soon see a young human in ragged, blood-stained clothes stepped step out onto the Nautiloid's prow. Wave his arms to get their attention, and he seems to be in distress. If one or more characters enter the Nautiloid's air envelope, he introduces himself as Benoto Quelazar and explains that his ship, the Nautiloid, was attacked by Yogi. He informs the characters that most of his crew are dead, but there are still a few survivors aboard and he can help free them. He begs the ship, the party's help. Benato is a sirloin, sirloin, is a sirloin hunger, a descendant of a group of sirloins that traveled with the Lucent and Dick's original Mind Flayer crew. The Mind Flayers were attacked and wiped out by Gip Yankee, who disabled the Nautiloid and left it adrift. Human pirates found the wreck and tried to plunder it, unaware that the sirloins left behind a hidden clutch of eggs. After hatching from their eggs, the juvenile Sirlons began preying on the pirates, killing several of them and forcing the rest to flee. One of the Sirlons then assumed the form of a pirate named Benoto Kralazar and has since been using the disguise to lure other victims onto the Lucent Edict. If the characters aboard the Lucent Edict, Benoto shows them around the ship while he spins a tale about his crew's harrowing encounter with a group of Neogi. The tale is not entirely fanciful. A band of Neogi did recently board the Lucent Edict in search of salvage, but they retreated once they realized the Nautiloid. The Nautiloid was home to a bunch of servants. This is a Neoki. Like a spider like creature. And they fall. A pirate and a hunter. Exploring a lucent edict. 
Use the not Lord deck plans in Chapter 2 of the Astral Review by Leland Rayner. That's 225 bucks. The not Lord is also missing its spell gem in Helm in its poet's deck, and its main canal is broken. The following features illumination all areas in the ship are dimly lit by flickering bioluminescent orbs mounted to the walls or hanging from the ceiling removing an orb from its socket causes the orb to grow dark interior doors each interior door is a fleshy barrier that opens when a creature that has telepathy approaches within five feet of it then quickly closes after the creature and its companions have moved through it. The door must otherwise be pried or tickled. Tickled open, which of course we've already done. The following locations are depicted on the not only deck plans. Locations that are not described below are assumed to contain nothing of interest. We have the captain's chair. An impressive chair is posed at the end of the catwalk, so its occupant can look down onto the bridge floor. Green glowing maggots crawl over the chair's current occupant, a headless mind flayer corpse. The Kathinki knight beheaded, beheaded, beheaded the Nautilus captain and took the head as a trophy, leaving the rest of the corpse slumped in the chair. Any character who disturbs the headless corpse causes the green glowing maggots covering it to become a hostile swarm of insects. Treasure. A character who examines the characters, the captain's chair and succeeds on a DC-15 intelligence investigation check finds a secret compartment in the left armrest. This compartment contains a black metal tube containing the spell scroll of Lying on the floor of this raised platform is a headless body of a mind flayer. The stench of the rotting corpse is unpleasant, to say the least. The dead mind flayer lies in an otherwise open space where you imagine the ship's helm used to be. The Githyanki who attacked the Nautilor disabled the craft by removing its spell gem and helm. They took the head of the dead mind flayer as a trophy. Lying on the deck near the dead mind flare is an Eon stone. The stone currently holds a single casting of the shield spell. It's of course how it gets in. That's Kevin. Orc elves or something to me. Then you have a buccaneer, star seer, and a xenomancer. Bridge floor. The Nautiloid's bridge has a high ceiling. The stairs ascend to a forward observation deck, and toward the stern, a ladder climbs to the top of the balcony. Four servants hide in the shadows under the two flights of stairs that climb to the observation platform. These servants, dang it, I gotta go quit saying that. Servants attack the king. If Benoto is present, he helps his fellow servants. Splintered remains of the Manganel lie on this forward deck, strewn around piles of ammunition. 
Amid several stacks of ballista bolts are a few clusters are yeah, are a few clusters of near canal stones. If the characters are interested in salvaging this ammunition, assume there are forty of each kind. That's all. The door to this poor compartment has been fastened shut with sutures made of ropes and steel hooks. A character can cut through the sutures with a suitable tool over in one minute of effort, after which the door can be opened normally. The mess hall contains a myth bogu that currently has eight grains. The Nathalgu, kept as a pet by the Mind Flayers, evaded the Gift Yankee by using its invisibility spell. But it was later trapped here by the human pirates after it killed one of their number. If a character approaches within 10 feet of the suture door, the Nathalgu calls out for help and comment, begging to be freed. He pretends to be a human pirate named Jasper Graves and claims to have been trapped here by the aberrations that murdered the rest of the crew. The Nethalgu knows that Sirlons have killed the other pirates and warns the characters about this if they haven't already discovered it for themselves. If the characters ask, but no total, about the Nethalgu's story, he dismisses its fabrication, dismisses it as a fabrication, explaining that Jasper is a brain-devouring apparition and that the character shouldn't trust a word it says, nor should they forget it. I like that idea because now the characters, they don't know that Benoto is not a natural human, and they don't know that Jasper is not a natural human. And both of them are trying to trick players, so it could be up to the DM as to who, you know, maybe like, one of them will actually decide to help the players against the other one. And then maybe at the end they'll still betray the players because they want to get it. Cargo hold. Mm. This cargo hold looks and smells like a slaughterhouse. Bodies lie strewn about the deck and the floor is stained with blood. Most of the bodies appear to be human, but one is in a rackling form with an ill-like neck and a head that lies as motionless as the others. If the characters follow Benato here, he tries to split the party at this point. He invites one or two characters to accompany him to Area 4, where their sirlines wait, lie in wait. While suggesting that the remaining characters stay behind and search the cargo hold. The cargo hold contains 11 human corpses. The arachnid form is a dead Naoki. A character who examines the corpses and makes a successful D10, DC 10 intelligence investigation check discovers that all the bodies have circular bite marks on them including the Niyogi. Although several scimitars and crossbows are scattered about the room, corpses, corpses show no evidence of having been struck by them. The bodies are in varying states of decay. With a successful DC-10 wisdom medicine check, a character can determine that the Niyogi died within the last 24 hours. At that, at, in that, the freshest human corpses are at least, least three years old. 
In addition to the corpses, the cargo hold has enough food and water stored in crates and casks to nourish the t 10 million creatures for five days. As well, as well as several barrels, as well, it should be as well as, as well as several barrels of pickled brains floating in brine. Boo for the mind flayers. Treasure. A search of the human corpses in the cargo hold turns up a total of 23 gold pieces and 117 silver pieces in loose change in a bloodstone ring worth 50 GP. 17. Cell block. The rotting corpse of a headless mind flayer lies amid the hacked up corpses of three hulking creatures with blood splattered white fur. The condition of the corpses suggests that something or someone have been feeding on them. Gif Yankee warriors slew a mind flayer and its three quagga thralls, then claimed the illithid's head as a trophy. The corpses are slowly beginning, being consumed by the Quagoth in Area 19, who survived the Gith Yankee attack. Hiding. Characters who take time to search the bodies find something of value. The cells used to contain nine prisoners. The Gith Yankee liberated their kin and put the other prisoners out of their misery. Characters who search the cells find the remains of three humans, a dwarf, a hadozi, and a plasmoid. Treasure. The beheaded mind flayer wears a plus one be breastplate embossed tentacles. That's cool. Storage. A terrible stench fills this compartment, but the flickering lights can't reveal its source. You do, however, hear heavy breathing. Quagoth hides around the corner in the starboard on the starboard side of the compartment, out of view of the doorway. Fearing capture attacks any creature that enters the compartment. Stench. Once the Quagoth is dealt with, the characters can track down the source of the terrible stench. The putrescent, mostly eaten corpse corpses of five Sirlon hidden under a staircase that climbs to the battle deck. Within these foul remains are dozens of gelatinous marble-sized marble egg casings left behind by the sirloin worms that hatched from the eggs. The Yogi Raiders The Yogi Raiders that made an abortive salvage attempt on the Lucent Edict didn't go far, reasoning that other ships might be attracted to the drifting derelict. The Nyogi piloted their craft into a cluster of nearby asteroids and waited. The Nyogi watched the Moon Dancers approach with interest, interest, waiting to see if the characters board the Nautiloid. Once the characters leave the Lucent Edict and return to their ship, the Nyogi spring their trap. Just as you are making ready to leave, a dark shape glides across the face of a nearby asteroid. It is another ship. The new arrival resembles a giant spider, complete with long, delicate legs and web-like rigging. Starlight gleams off its metallic hull as it creeps silently toward your vessel. A night spider, shouts Captain Sartell. The Nyogi were using this hulk as bait and we've flown right into their web. Here ends part one of the adventure. Each character should gain a level before the next session. So there we go. That's the end of part one. So we had chapter one, Astral Reign, where your home world is being attacked by the uh, crystalline vines. Then we've got Attack of the Star Moth. Basically, when we uh, get off of the of the planet of our planet and going towards the Rock of Brahm, we get attacked by some astral elves. 
after dealing with that, we came across a nice little Mauloid derelict ship that has some enemies on there that were trying to act a little different. And then we're going to have chapter four, which is starting the start of part two.